Hello, and welcome to Challenge Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 tips for what you can do to help your blind or visually impaired child be more independent in your home. Independence at home is really important for blind children because if they are expected to be independent at home, that's going to carry over and they're going to want to be more independent in school and just in life. And the goal is for your child to eventually live a fully independent life and be out on their own. So the earlier you start teaching, the easier this is going to be. So tip number one, have a place for everything and always keep it there. Remember that your blind child cannot identify things by color or any kind of visual cue. If you have a carton of milk and a carton of pineapple juice in your refrigerator and you have no specific places for each, your blind child is either going to have to A, sniff the carton to figure out what it is, or B, pour it and hope for the best, and neither of those is a particularly good option. The same logic can be applied to canned foods, foods in jars like pickles and jalapenos, cleaners that you might have, and pretty much all similarly sized and textured things that you're gonna have in your home. But even if certain things do have really distinct textures, having specific places for them is going to make finding them a lot easier for your child. Remember again that they cannot simply scan their surroundings to find what they're looking for. For them, looking is going to be done through touch, and your eyes can cover a significantly larger area in a couple of seconds than your hands can. If your child knows where to look for everything they might need, being independent is going to be a lot easier for them, and they're going to be more likely to just get up and do things themselves instead of having to ask you where to find everything they need. Tip number two is make your appliances tactile. Blind people are very capable of using household appliances without help, but you do need to be sure that you make everything tactile so your blind child can use it efficiently. You can buy supplies like braille labelers and raised sticky dots from the braille superstore, which I will link in the description, but you can also do a lot with office supplies that you might buy anywhere like Walmart or Staples. For example, you can tape a toothpick to the line on your washer and dryer dials, and then use sticky tack to indicate where the toothpick should be pointed for various cycle choices. You can also use tape or stickers and pinch them up to make them tactile and use them for your microwave or other things that have flat surfaces with buttons on them that your child can't feel. Typically in the microwave situation, I would put stickers on two, five, eight, zero, start and cancel, and then let the child use those as references to find the rest of the buttons on the appliance. In my experience, it's best to use as little as possible to portray as much as possible because having too many stickers and textures on a surface can just make things even more confusing. But you can work with your child and modify your home appliances in whatever way works best for them. Tip number three, get smart home devices and other technology to make tasks easier. Technology in general should be every blind person's best friend. Technology can make pretty much every area of life smoother and easier for almost any blind person. And household tasks are no exception. Smart speakers like the Amazon Echo and Google Home are a good place to start. These speakers can make it easier for your child to look up recipes, conduct web searches. They can also be used to control other smart home devices, such as lights and thermostats. A blind child may not realize that they accidentally left their bedroom light on all night, but with these devices, they can set routines to make sure the light turns off automatically every night at bedtime. I had one of these in my room for a long time, and I really loved it. I've never personally used one, but I also believe that smart thermostats could be very beneficial for a blind child, assuming that the corresponding app for whatever you use is accessible. Because thermostats are just generally very difficult for us to operate since we can't read the tiny little screens that they have. I've talked to some other blind people who have purchased smart thermostats and 
Overall, they recommend Nest as a good brand to buy from. However, Google did recently buy Nest, and I don't personally own one, so take that with a grain of salt, but if you're looking for somewhere to start, Nest might be a good brand to go with. You can also buy smart TVs so that your child can independently choose what they want to watch. I use the Apple TV, and I absolutely love it, so that is my recommendation, but there are some other accessible options. I've heard that Roku sticks, LG TVs, and Amazon Fire Sticks are all at least semi-decent. Keep in mind though that some streaming apps such as Disney Plus are just very inaccessible with screen readers in general, so you may still need to help your child with this, but services like Netflix have reasonably accessible smart TV apps and audio described movies and shows, so Having a smart TV and those services is just going to give your blind child the freedom to independently choose what they want to watch. If your child has an iOS device, you can also download apps like Seeing AI, which I will link in the description, and those apps are going to help them identify objects through image and text recognition, as well as scan barcodes to figure out what certain products are. So all of those technologies can be really helpful and they can help your child be as independent as possible in your house. Tip number four, be hands-on when teaching. Obviously, you are not going to be able to teach your blind child by letting them watch you do things. There are several ways you can tackle this and I recommend using all of them in conjunction with one another. For example, when my mom taught me how to make my bed, she described to me what I needed to do made one half of the bed, one step at a time, and then watched as I made the other half. This way, I had her verbal feedback about what she was doing, I could feel her make the other side of the bed, and then I could have the experience of making my side with her, again, telling me where I was going wrong and what I was doing right. This is also how I learned to fix my hair, vacuum, dust, and do a lot of what I do around the house. In some situations, such as when you're cooking, you can't really repeat the processes you're doing multiple times, and in these situations, I find it most helpful to just perform the tasks myself and then get feedback as I go, or to perform them together depending on, you know, how young and the skill level of the child. The important thing is just that your child is getting the experiences as you're teaching them. You can't just ask them to take out the trash, for example, and expect them to know what to do and where to take it. They've never seen you do that before, so you should be sure to go over each step of the process and let them do it so they understand. Tip number five, understand that some things may take your child longer. This applies to learning and to just doing daily tasks in general. It may take your blind child longer to learn tasks because again, they can't watch you do them. They might forget some steps or how things need to feel when they're finished. Back to the example of my mom teaching me how to make my bed. I used to always forget to tuck the bottom corners in. I'm not sure why it was that specifically, but that is what I forgot. Of course, a sighted person would look and see that the sheets were hanging down too far at the bottom. They would know that this is not how the bed is supposed to look because they've seen other beds that are made. But for me, I didn't realize that I had skipped a step or done anything wrong until my mom came in and showed me what I had done. She fixed one corner of the bed, told me to feel the difference, and then asked me what I forgot to do. Eventually, I remembered that I needed to fold the corners under each morning and feel to make sure that everything was tucked in properly. But even after a skill is learned completely, it may take your child a little longer to perform the task just because of the way in which we have to do it. I would almost guarantee that I spend longer making my bed every morning than the average person does, even now, because I have to feel each side to be sure that everything is hanging over the same length, feel the sheets and comforter to be sure there are no wrinkles, and then just identify all my pillows and blankets by touch instead of by sight. Cooking is another example of this. It literally takes me right at three hours to make a four dozen batch of chocolate chip cookies. And I'm talking about the recipe on the back of the bag, nothing too difficult. This is because I have to read the recipe in braille, 
identify all the ingredients using either touch or technology, and feel when I'm measuring everything. But I still make cookies independently, and that is the important thing. So I say all this to say, be patient with your child. Things are going to take them longer, and that's okay. The important thing is that they are doing them independently. Because, again, we want them to live alone. We don't want anyone to have to help them make their bed or make cookies. And it will take them longer, but it will be okay. Tip number six. Explain where things are in relation to each other. This mainly applies to areas inside the house in relation to areas outside. For example, your child may not understand which part of your yard is outside of their bedroom window. Having this information can help them to identify what they're hearing and make assumptions about what's happening around them. For example, if I hear an ATV outside my window, I know that my neighbors are probably just driving around the field behind our house. But if I hear a four-wheeler outside my kitchen window, they are probably coming up my driveway into my house and I should prepare to let them in. These concepts may seem pretty simple. They're something that a lot of sighted people do and don't think about, but a lot of blind children, including myself for a very long time, lack the knowledge of just where they are in space. They can't relate where they are to the things that are outside of the rooms that they're in. They can't see their window, so they probably will not understand what is directly outside of it unless you tell them. Tip number seven, give your blind child the same chores and responsibilities that you would give a sighted child of their age. This is probably the most important tip on this list. A lot of parents have not met an independent blind adult. They may not realize that their blind child is perfectly capable of doing anything that a sighted child of their age can do, maybe short of driving to the store to get groceries. That one may not end too well. But blind children can cook, they can clean, do their own laundry, wash dishes, and pretty much any other household chore. Don't be afraid to let them try all of these things. Yes, including using the oven. It will not kill them. It may take you longer to teach them, and it may take them longer to do things, but they will need these skills for their independent life out on their own. Tip number eight, be sure your child is included in family activities. This is especially important if your child has siblings or cousins or other close family members of their age. And this doesn't mean that you can only do things that you believe your blind child will benefit from as a family. For an example, if you want to have a family video game night, you can still do that with a blind child, even if the games are not accessible for them. But you should give your blind child the experience of attempting to play that game. Maybe have another family member direct the blind child on which buttons to push and tell them what's happening on the screen. If one of your family members plays sports, this can also be enjoyable for your blind child. You can explain the game to them and give them a play-by-play -play so they know exactly what's happening. Then when everyone is talking about the game on the ride home, your blind child will understand the conversation and can follow along. I actually know several blind people that enjoy listening to sports games and really do get into them, so this can be really fun for your blind child. Also, when you go on vacations, Plan activities that your blind child can be involved in. This doesn't mean creating your whole vacation around your blind child. If you have another child who wants to go to the aquarium, it's okay to go to the aquarium. But explain to your blind child what you're looking at and give them as many tactile experiences as possible. Like if there's a way for them to put their hand in the water and touch a squid, that's something that I did one time. Let them do those things. If they have the opportunity to swim with dolphins or anything interactive, be sure you let them take that opportunity. But also, be sure that you do plan activities that they can take part in, such as concerts or audio-guided tours or things that they can hear and feel and do. And, of course, for family activities, you can also use things specifically made for the blind with your family, such as braille card games and braille board games. But remember that you don't have to. The key is just to make sure that your blind child doesn't feel alienated from the rest of the family. Instead of assuming that they won't want to do something because they're blind, Think about how you can involve them despite their blindness. Tip number nine, when you need to help, 
offer first. One thing that I've noticed with parents of blind children is that they often do things for the child without asking first. I was never used to this, and one day I was standing in the lunch line at school, and a teacher walked up and started tying my shoe. I was well past old enough to tie my own shoes at that point, and I did not realize what the teacher was doing, so I was just really confused, and this is the reaction that you want your child to have if something like this happens. There are things that you're going to need to help your child with. You should always teach them how to do things themselves, but in the end, if it ends up being extremely difficult and troublesome for them, and you know they're capable of doing it themselves, you don't have to sit there and watch them struggle every single time. An example is cutting meat. I have never met a blind person who enjoys that process. We all know the technique, and we can all do it, but most people I've met will specifically avoid eating meat that they know they're going to have to cut just to avoid the awkward process of cutting it. Your child should learn how to cut their own meat. They should be able to do it, and you should make them do it independently until they can do it consistently. But after that, it is okay to help them. However, there is a right and a wrong way to go about it. You should never just take your child's plate and start cutting their meat if they are capable of doing that themselves. You should always ask if they would like the help first. This ultimately puts the decision in their hands. If they would like to cut the meat themselves just to show that they can, they have every right to take as long as they need and make as much of a mess as they might make to do that. But if they would rather just have you do it because it's easier for everyone involved and gets them out of what can be an extremely awkward situation, you can cut the meat. Of course, this logic applies in other cases too. You should just always make sure that your child has the skills they need, and after that, make sure that you ask them before you just help them. And tip number 10. Expect your child to be independent. I know I just said that it was okay for you to help your child if they're really struggling, and it is, but that is only for extreme circumstances. Things like getting a drink, tying their shoes, cleaning their room, and really most other things that they're going to typically be doing around the house are not extreme circumstances. It is worth noting that every child is going to be at a different age and a different level. Obviously, you can't finish this video and then entirely change your expectations for your child, but you can finish this video and change your own mindset. Your goal is to raise a child who can be independent and live on their own one day. Blindness does not prohibit that from happening, but in order for your child to be independent, they have to be expected to do things for themselves. You should teach them how to do these things, be 100% sure that they understand, and then expect them to do them without help. Doing this shows them that you believe they can be independent, and it's going to give them valuable skills, as well as more confidence and self-esteem. If you believe they can do it, they are also going to be more likely to believe they can do it. Teaching, encouraging, and expecting your child to be independent is probably the best thing that you can do for them as their parent. So with all that being said, it's time to wrap this video up. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that the algorithm continues to know that we exist. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those in the comments section of this video or in the contact form at challengesolutions.org. For more content like this, keep an eye on the Challenge Solutions blog, podcast, and YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.